the Legends and Millennials panel, so this one is always fun and interactive, and you get to hear from all, all these bright minds. George Gilio, Gilio, sorry, is our moderator, so I'm going to turn it on over to him, and thank you so much for attending. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. And I know it's getting near 5 o'clock, and we're all antsy to party tonight, but uh, we've saved some of the best for last. So um, I've got here a panel of legends and millennials. I'm not going to call them out in order because they've been switching seats, but we've got, <laughs> if you could just raise your hand a second and so everybody will know. I've got Jonathan Keith right here. He's a millennial. We've got uh, <laughs> Christopher Zoller, legend. legend. He is also the chairman of the board of the Miami Association. And, uh, He's also a legend in my mind. So. <laughs> then we've got David Grego, another legend. Dania Diaz, Jeffrey Corlan, and Sam Williams. Thank you very much. Okay, so we can take this in uh, any order. I've got some uh, questions for you guys. Told me that you're good on your feet. So first we'll uh, first we'll have a millennial question. Let's see, and we can take whoever wants to start. Oh, you've got the mic. Okay. Um, you you've become so successful in such a relatively short time and at a young age. What do you credit the most significant reason for your success? Okay, um, I think the most important uh, aspect of why I've become successful is my relationship building with my clients, with my family, with my friends. Um, everybody that I meet is a potential uh, sale, but I don't ever treat it that way. Um, I take pride in uh, making sure that every client feels like family and friend, and sometimes I have to go the extra mile, uh, do things that are unexpected uh, to help them. Because in the end of the day, the, the most important thing that, that I focus on is I'm here to help. So I would say relationship building 101 is very important. Great. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll definitely agree with that. You just never know where your next deal is definitely coming from. You know, One thing that I take into consideration is basically um, contact building, um, rapport building, and basically staying informed, you know, staying informed because the one question that we always get is how is the market, how is real estate doing today, you know? And you want to make sure that you're very knowledgeable, especially if you're talking about a particular area that you work. You want to make sure that you know that area to the back of your hand because you just never know, you know? I actually have a prime example, you know, I was at a family function on Memorial Day and um, I have a guy that actually lived in Weston. Um, I work Weston, which is one of the Fort Lauderdale areas. And he started asking me about certain subs, um, subdivisions that were in Weston, and I was able to answer him because of my knowledge. So, like, like she said, you just never know where your next piece of business is coming from. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I would say uh, for me, it's just my direct sales experience. I started knocking doors when I was 18 years old. It's just all I've ever really done is direct sales. Um, that and you know, I started coaching about three and a half years ago that really kind of changed the way I, I ran my business. And then another part is really the, um, the training that my brokerage offers. Uh, that, was, that has been really a key uh, factor in uh, getting, getting me to where I'm at today. Is just uh, our broker spends a lot of time and money um, just developing our resources and teaching them to us and training them. I mean, it's every single day. So um, picking, a, picking a good broker, the right broker, making sure you have the right environment into which you can you know, pro progress in, I think is uh, hugely important and, uh, and, and learning this business, so. Let me just interrupt here for one quick second. You notice a quite an interesting change as you go down the line here. Uh, Sam looks like he really is in the middle. He's a, he's a legend millennial. <laughs> <laughs> he, he clearly doesn't qualify where, you know, where David and I are. No gray hair, I mean, come on, what's up with that? So uh, he's, he's, he's sort of a cheater in here. In the there middle. you go. Okay, well, we've got one more that straddles the line here, which is uh, Jonathan. He's a millennial turning legend. So we'll let him finish up and then uh, we'll go to the legend, legends. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure that out. I, uh, I mean, I have some millennials that are on our team uh, and I look at, 
I look at like as far as like when we're looking to hire in general, I look at effort more than anything. We see a lot of, uh, of people coming into the business that just are missing that work ethic. And that's some of the things that I have challenges with on the team. Um, but definitely to kind of tie into, what was your name on the way, on the, are you hearing the keys? Sam? Yes. Tie into Sam, you know, we look at, you know, as far as the team and how I run uh, with the millennials, and we have different age groups, uh, as we run as, a, we run as a team, we run as a quarterback. I, I run as a quarterback and, you know, uh, you kind of look at things as like football. Um, and also fishing is another way I, I kind of look at our business as well. It's a great, you know, filling the pond and allowing fish to come in and catching them. And just because they come on the boat doesn't mean that you're going to be able to eat and be able to fly. And that's, that's full-blown real estate in itself. Um, so that's, you know, some internal thoughts and analogies on how I look at, you know, our business. Thank you, Jonathan. Why don't we send it down to David and we'll start couple of uh, legend questions. I, I think the biggest thing that this helped is returning a phone call promptly, returning text promptly, returning emails promptly, um, and staying in touch with your people and building relationships. Um, you know, we've got, over the years, we've accumulated probably 5,000 people in our database that sit here and get emails from us every two or three weeks. Um, it's just critical in the work habit. You know, it's. You just got to do what's right all the time for the people. Every time, no matter if it's your listening and you think you want them to get it, and if something else is better for them, you need to help them get something else. And that really is critical. I think a lot of agents don't do that, that uh, they try to, you know, double dip, <clears throat> which I do as well. However, it's best for them. So it's always got to be best for the customer, in my opinion. Before you pass it on to our other legend, what has sustained you? Because the millennials are just getting started. What has sustained you? What has been the biggest contributing factor to you sustain? First of all, how long have you been in the business? Um, yeah, that's a good question, because I've only been a realtor for 14 years. I okay. started in 03. I, this is my second career as a contractor for my first career. All right. So, and that helps a lot in this business, because you're able to go to people and know what's going to cost to fix something, because I've done it a whole bunch of times already in the past. Um, so I've been, I got my license in 04. I opened my brokerage in August of 05, um, and just never stopped working. I work all the time. You know what? And Sam always gives me a hard time when I'm always out of time. I said, yeah, but I'm still working. <laughs> so it's returning the call and calls and staying on top of what you got going. Thank you. Thank you, David. Mr. Zola. Well, it's hard to say what's kept me in the business since uh, I was starting the business before half of you were born. <laughs> uh, I got my first license in 1973 in Connecticut. I was finishing up college, and my mother and her partner asked me if I wanted to uh, join them. So I did for a while. I moved on and got my license in New York. And a group of people from Tennessee found me and got me set up in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And finally in 1980, I was passing through doing some work here in Florida and I got my Florida license. From there, I moved on to the Virgin Islands and worked there for eight years until I returned to Miami, where I have been ever since. So what has sustained me in the business? It's my love for the business. And you hear people talk about, you know, uh, oh, I just in enjoy putting people in houses and making them happy and finding them success. All that is very true, but you have to believe it and you have to really know. So I, I early on took a great appreciation for buildings, for houses. The city I grew up in, the little town I grew up in was founded pre-revolutionary. So we had buildings that went back to the 1680s. And I've loved architecture, I've loved buildings ever since, and I love putting people in them and, and making them happy. And you know what, it's covered a lot of territories, four different states, and uh, it's still a wonderful people business, things that you can do. A few things I learned along the way that were really, uh, they sounded like cliches at the time, but uh, one of them is number one, talk to lots of people every day. Uh, number two is exactly as uh, David just said, return your phone calls promptly. One of the passions that I brought with me from years ago is professional standards. Something that uh, we really need to focus on. I, I realize that Florida Realtors sunsetted that committee last year, but I urge you all in, uh, back home and your boards to, uh, to, to look to your professional standards, to look your, to your professionalism. Uh, this is what separates us from the rest of the world. Remember that there are probably three times as many real estate licensees as there are realtors. And it's us realtors who uh, adhere to the code of ethics and to set the standards of professionalism. So just bear that in mind and, and, and keep it to your heart and keep it in your business. 
Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for that. So here's a question for all of us, for all millennial legends. Which is the biggest mistake that you made at the beginning of your business, in some shorter time than others, and how did you rebound from it? So we can start that with anybody. Biggest mistake and how did you rebound from that mistake? I would answer this question. I would say um, not having a game plan, not having a business plan, um, not knowing what to do, you know? I think that's one of the biggest mistakes is, you know, know, knowing your numbers, knowing what you need to do, understanding that the bills are due on the first of every month, you know? So one of my biggest mistakes is just getting in the business after seeing it and saying, hey, this is a great business, I wanna get into it, but not knowing what to do, you know? So definitely following behind someone, uh, following behind your manager, following behind a leader, maybe the mentorship program or jumping on the team, you know, that definitely helps because from there, you know, hey, I need to be prospecting in the morning, I need to be doing lead generation, I need to be door knocking, I need to be doing this because at the end of the month, I need to have a pipeline, you know? So I believe that's definitely knowing exactly where you're gonna go and getting there. Um, I think that for me, it's just uh, taking so long to get my into the mindset of listings being the most important part of my business. Um, and I, you know, uh, when you first get in, uh, that's the hardest part is, is learning the listing game. Uh, buyers are a lot easier to work with. I don't know if this is okay. but uh, buyers are a lot easier to work with, and, and they are a necessary evil when you're first starting being a brand new agent. You are going to have to um, work with those buyers and, and create that past customer database. Um, so that they can be your future sellers and, and then just keeping in touch with those guys. But, you know, it took, it took uh, you know, a few years of coaching and a lot of training uh, and just, you know, from my broker for me to start really aggressively uh, start attacking listings like I was buyers. And that really changed, that really changed the way my business um, operated. It changed my, uh, my scheduling and just was able to uh, allow me to take a little bit more control of my business and make it a little more predictable. So, um, you know, listings is definitely the name of the game here, and um, just do your best to, to, to capitalize on learning how to can your presentation, make it the best best that it can be. Uh, very early on uh, in my career representing a buyer, and, and please don't be afraid of buyers, they're, they're half of our business, and should be. But I, I missed a listing. I, didn't, I was showing him everything I could think of, but there was one house I didn't show him. Guess what? He found another realtor and he bought that house from her. So that was a painful early lesson, which I have still not forgotten all these years. I thought you were gonna say, what mistake? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of others, that was my first. <laughs> Somebody's gotta say that. <laughs> my biggest mistake was being organized. Um, I actually had a file with HUD, home store. I just got you know, back into the business. Uh, I started in 2004 as an assistant, and then I became a bartender because the market wasn't that great. And then five years ago, I got back in. I was all excited, got this, uh, this sale going on, and I had all these documents everywhere. And I had to submit uh, for, for timely closing, and I just couldn't find anything. So I had to learn real quick how to organize myself. <clears throat> so what I did was I, um, everybody, you have access to different cloud softwares. I actually uh, prefer Google Drive. I have a Gmail account. You can link and you can save things to your drive directly from your email. So it makes it very simple. So I have a system where if I don't read the email, or if I don't organize the file, I don't mark the email as read. So all my emails are, are always read, and if they're not read, they need to be addressed. And then another thing was like, when you're out on the field, you'll get people ask you, you know, oh, can you look on this property, or I have a question, or can you send me this? And you're out and you're busy. So I keep a very um, detailed to-do list. So I have notes, and I have little green checks, and I roll things over, and I've become extremely more organized than I was, and that was my um, biggest mistake. Thank you. Is that mic working? Yeah, it's fine. Can you answer? Okay. So I think probably one of my biggest mistakes was uh, probably timing. I probably should have gotten involved in my community a lot sooner. I needed to determine that you know being in Fort Lauderdale was going to be my home for as long as I've been in Fort Lauderdale since 2000. I've been an agent since 2003. I could say that I probably started getting involved in the city and, and engaging 
I do have kind of like an ROI, and it's that return on investment, that's return on involvement. That didn't take place until maybe 2006, seven. So if I had to start a little sooner, um, that would have definitely pole vaulted me, I think, a lot a lot stronger into the community. I think that was probably one of my biggest mistakes. A couple others, um, setting expectations for the team. You know, I've taken on team members over the years, and maybe I didn't really align um, or the path the way it should have played out from the beginning, so things maybe just unraveled later on down the road, and that probably could have been uh, deterred from. Um, and uh, one person, I had, a, I had an individual in between that time when I, before I started really getting involved in our community in the city of Fort Lauderdale, was he told me, do good, do well. Thank you, Jonathan. So here's a question for everybody, millennials and legends. What are the top and favorite two or three sources for your business leads? Uh, personal relationships. Um, what I do is uh, every single holiday, I go through all of my text messages. You know, you have history saved on your phone. And I literally text everybody, um, family, friends, past, you know, past clients, and I'll tailor it. You know, usually it's copy and paste, but uh, I can tailor it a little bit to personalize it for certain people. And um, actually this year I had, uh, I said Merry Christmas to a, a past client. He's like, oh, I just sold a commercial property and I have some 1031 exchange money to use and I'm looking to buy like 10 investment properties. And that was from a simple text. Um, I also think that your online presence is very important. Um, I work for, well, it doesn't matter. Um, don't want to solicit any specific company. Um, but uh, if you have a very strong online presence, you will get referral leads from there. I would say about 15% of my business is referral um, from online leads. And then I would say about 70% is uh, past relationships and then um, Facebook, believe it or not. Um, I don't really do too much on my personal profile. I have a business profile set up and I target um, and spend money on, on ad targeting uh, for certain you know, demographics certain, uh, that, that I'm looking to target. And um, I have actually gotten a lot of business and also uh, my peers and family, they're like, oh, you're doing so good. I see you on Facebook and I see your posts and you know all about Miami. And so that would have to be my. Thank you. Um, I would say that um, door knocking is very big. I'm very big on door knocking. Um, so many people are afraid of them slamming the doors on their face. You know, that actually entices me, that, that turns me on some type of way, you know. <laughs> um, it, it makes me want to go out and knock on the next door, you know. Um, another thing that, that, that helps me a lot is, is cold calling, cold calling, you know. Um, I'm big on fistbows, I'm big on expireds. Um, back at my company, I train a lot on, on fistbows and door knocking and calling expireds. I think what, what happens is, is that people say that they're going to do it. They probably do it one day, but it's the consistency, you know putting a system together and saying, hey, between these times, I'm gonna be calling, I'm gonna be calling Fizzbos, I'm gonna be calling expires. Um, I, I know this one time that I continued calling this lady, you know, and from there, she says, you keep calling me, just come over. <laughs> I actually ended up going over to her house, she had me sitting down, she was having the carpet clean. Um, I got that listing, but from that one listing that I got as a Fizzbo that I kept calling, I got like four of the listings in that one building. So it's being persistent. And then lastly, I'm a big follower of graffiti, um, building relationships with your, your customers, building relationships with your friends and family members. Um, that's another great pipeline as well. You know, the holidays, as she says, um, not only just the, the sending out the, the text message, but some, sometimes just going by their house, bringing them something, you know, something that the other person's not doing and just going outside of the box and getting that done. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, everybody um, pretty much said it. it's prospecting. I mean, I, I believe um, uh, if you're not prospecting, you're, you're not gonna grow in this business, uh, or it's very hard to grow in this business if you're not making those phone calls every single day. Uh, past, I mean, and not just expires and for sale by owners, we do have to call those, uh, but past customers, you know, uh, building those relationships, keeping those, keeping in touch with those people that you've already done business. Those are the people that already know you. Um, it's very easy for them to do business with you again if they were happy the first time. So uh, to not 
you know, uh, cultivate those relationships as much as possible um, and keep in touch with them and try to, you know, once a quarter, they, you know, once a quarter at least they should get a phone call and uh, that's, that's just a huge way to uh, keep your pipeline full right there. So. Um, I think in the, these guys have got it on track, they're all younger than we are. However, internet is internet, internet, internet. Um, where would we be without our iPhones and, and being able to communicate the way we communicate in today's world? Um, the greatest thing about our industry is being able to do it anywhere in the world. You know, you, as long as you have an internet and phone, you can, you can work. Um, I think our, my biggest lead source is all from internet. You know, I'm real big on some internet marketing groups. I've been with them. I picked a few of them early on when I didn't even know who they were, and nor did anybody else, but it was, it was a good investment for us at the time. Um, and now our internet exposure is very, very high, along with our websites, and we get tremendous amount of leads. Thank you. I'm very impressed with the fact that most of you have uh, uh, sounded very old school. Um, Jonathan, community involvement is very important. Your Chamber of Commerce, Rotary Club, Kiwanis, uh, your church, your synagogue, your mosque, wherever you go, wherever you worship, wherever you see people. Earlier today you heard Barry Grooms ask you to stand up if you did participation in any of these other, uh, whether it's your kid's soccer team or basketball or whatever it is. So old school referrals, connections, uh, involvement in the community is important. It's interesting that David was the first one to really say, okay, great, on the internet, Denia, you did also mention Facebook, but uh, I'm still pretty much old school. Everything I've done or do is, is revolved around my community and the people that I know and, and have come to work with. And of course, that leads to when you get to be, you know, legendary, legendary supposedly. Now, a lot of people remember you, hopefully they remember you, and, uh, and they'll continue to refer you business. So. Uh, the old methods still are tried and true. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for those answers. And uh, I must say, I've never heard someone say that knocking on doors raises their adrenaline. So, <laughs> thank you, Jeffrey. I mean, I, I train a lot of agents, and uh, I've never said heard that one. That's, that actually, he said it turns them on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I've never heard. So, thank you. Thanks for that. We should actually have a meeting with you to find out how we can get turned on. <laughs> There's a special preparation that you do. So I'd like to know that. So here's something that I get a lot from uh, new agents, and that is there's so many apps, there's so many programs. Which ones should I concentrate on? Which apps should I use and maybe not learn some apps right away? Which are your favorite apps, your three favorite apps that you think that, whether you're a millennial or whether you're a legend, three apps that you think a new agent cannot do without, that they have to learn those three apps or programs? We can start anywhere. Start with one. I don't know. I mean, think about it. It's, to, me, to me, it's the organizational apps, the, the remote apps that allow you to do things uh, remotely and from wherever you're at. So, um, you know, my Outlook app is huge for me. That's my emails and my calendar. You know, without my, you know, without that calendar, um, you know, I would not be able to. Uh, you, you just it, that's that's your whole day right there. You know, um, and then dot loop. You know, the the electronic signature platforms, huge. Uh, that's. I mean, you can be anywhere and share the documents, you know, get it delivered to the agent. That way you establish your effective date as soon, you know, you don't have to wait to get back to your machine. I mean, all these things are, you know, uh, you know hopefully putting us ahead of the curve, which is what they're made to do. And um, they do that daily for, for, for me. Uh, so dot loop, Outlook, and um, um, third one, um, uh, well, I just learned something. I didn't realize Outlook was a was a was an app. <laughs> <laughs> no, Outlook, I program. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate that. So I guess that's one of my favorite ones too. Doc. I use it, but I didn't realize it was an app. I just thought it was something else. Yeah, you can send your attachments. Oh, I use it for the computer. So who's next? Um, what, what, as a millennial, what I'm going to say is the social media. That's one of the biggest apps that I have that's out there. Facebook. Um, Facebook. What else do I use? I'm on everything. Um, Instagram. Snapchat. Um, one thing that I am going to say is that if you're going to use them, use them right. Um, like for example, if you're going to use Facebook, there's a Facebook Messenger. I actually failed at that because I would use the Facebook and I would post things on there, but I never had my Facebook Messenger app turned on. 
So people would text me on there, and I'd never know to check it until one day I went on there, and I'm like, I have all these messages, you know? So it's one app that I actually taken out of a folder, and I put it on my phone directly so that I see that notification on my Apple phone. Um, but social media apps are one of my biggest apps that I would say, okay, I'm, I'm big on Snapchat, you'll find me on there. Um, I've, I've inquired business off of there. I've posted things on there and people have commented, you know. It's raised conversations. It's, it's, I've gotten buyers from there. I've gotten sellers off of there, you know. Instagram is another big app that I use. Um, it's another thing, you know, using the live, the Facebook live, it's very big. Putting that one-on-one -on -one connection with that person, you just don't know the conversations that come from there. So I think as we move, as we progress, it's definitely social media's key. I'm extremely mobile. Um, I work a lot off my phone. I use obviously the MLS app when someone calls me. Um, I use the Google Drive. And many of you don't know, Google Drive also has spreadsheets, presentations, and notes. So like for example, today I took my notes on the Google Drive uh, note platform, and then I'll be able to access it uh, anywhere. Um, one of my favorite apps that not a lot of people know about is uh, HomeSnap. You can be in front of any property. It's great because you can just like snap picture and then it tells you this property's been listed, it went pending, it went active, it, the price is reduced, it's been on for six months. Um, here's some similar listings, here's the schools, here's what the school scores are. Uh, so you, like before, <laughs> before I found this app, I used to go online and I used to do all this research, write it on each listing sheet and I used to have you know folders with all a bunch of papers. Now I don't bring any papers anywhere. Um, another app that I also use a lot is RPR. I mean, you guys, if you're not using that app, you need to. Uh, you can be anywhere with any client, and they could be like, well, what do you think we should offer on this property? And you could just be like, oh, let's look, let's look at the comps room together, and let's see what's going on in the neighborhood. Of course, I'm gonna send you a more detailed report later, but you know, just for now, we can just kind of see what's going on together, so we have an eye. And um, people like that you're, you know, that you're able to work you know, in front of them. Um, most of the time, I, I pull out all these apps in front of my clients and I show them, and then people are like, oh wow, you know, she's really technically savvy and she, she can work, you know, she has the information at her fingertips, makes you an expert, so. Um, I've got a few apps, actually. Uh, one of the apps right off the bat I use is uh, WhatsApp uh, for the team, because we're able to all communicate once you get over a certain amount on text. I think it's like 10 people on text, you can't can't really communicate from that point. So WhatsApp really works out great for me. Another app um, I use is Dropbox. Um, you take on you know, some large files, so sometimes when I'm out on the road taking listings, I'm not even at the office. I have my admin just working out all the comps, doing all the details, you know, specifically identifying the property and the listing agreement. So when I show up at the, uh, at the seller's house, I, I haven't even been to the office. I'm able to go right onto my iPad and do a full-blown listing presentation that's specifically curtailed to that specific home tied in with the community. And Dropbox allows me to handle that. Uh, definitely the, uh, the uh, MLS mobile app's huge. Um, but I definitely think those, those, those three apps are big. Google, you know, otherwise, is just awesome. Right? If, you're, if you're savvy on the calendar side of Google, that's, that's huge, especially when you're running several people. I was going to ask Jonathan which which MLS uh, mobile app are you are you referring to? Yeah, Miami MLS. <clears throat> so go MLS or just Miami Miami MLS? Go MLS. Uh, well, I'm excited to know that Outlook is an app and, and Facebook is an app. I didn't, didn't realize that. I, of course, I use those too. But uh, you, know, you mentioned today getting around. Uh, I love Waze. Waze has been a huge uh, plus and, and better than the navigation system in my car. So I'm, I'm pleased to use that. Uh, I do agree with, you know, WhatsApp is fabulous, uh, a great app. And not using uh, Twitter or Facebook nearly as much as I should, I do use an app called Swarm. And Swarm is an outgrowth of something called Foursquare. And now I'm checking in with uh, almost every place I go. The next thing I know, if I touch the Facebook and the Twitter button, uh, anybody who's anywhere near. So I'm getting feedback from a lot of other places based on where I was under Swarm and I just happened to mention it under my Twitter account. So it's been, you know, Waze is a location-based item, so is Swarm, so I'm having good fun with them. And, and then I agree with almost everything else everybody said, WhatsApp, a great way to stay in touch. Like, for example, when we were up at Guard, um, Danielle Blake started a WhatsApp for all of us running around Tallahassee, the same thing we did in Washington, D.C. during the NAR legislative meetings. So um, staying in touch with everybody, communications, 
those are the apps that are, are most important. So location and communication. And George, one other app that I use too for the uh, for the team is is uh, Hootsuite. And Hootsuite will I actually have all the services for the team as well. So that's my social media uh, platform. Um, and I've tried to feed it, and um, for some reason I can't I can't figure it out. So maybe Swarm. I'm going to look into Swarm. But Hootsuite's one of the ones. Okay, so everyone answered that question. It's interesting that most of the programs and apps were not really real estate specific. So it uh, goes to show you how we really have to learn so many different apps and for a new person just getting their license, sometimes it could be daunting. Um, I do want to mention that Jonathan and Chris talked about GoMLS and one of the things I like to tell my agents is that GoMLS is a mobile MLS it's disguised as a mobile MLS, but it's actually a lead generator. And uh, if you want more information on that, you can get information on, law, on the uh, Miami uh, RE website. There's uh, uh, information about Go MLS, but people that open it up, they think it's a, just an MLS program, but it's, it's not, it's a lead generator. So here's a great question. What's the one piece of advice you can give someone who they got their license an hour ago and they've got stars they've got stars in their eyes and they come to you and they say I want to be like you what's the best piece of advice you can give them well I think it's what Sam said originally on the find yourself a really good broker uh, go to work for someone who uh, you can respect and who is knowledgeable and experienced and is willing to teach you and uh, and absorb everything you can be willing to do the grunt work that that person may want you to do because eventually you're going to have to do your own grunt work and it'll be well worth your while to learn everything you can from a knowledgeable, experienced, and willing teacher. What I found is, uh, you know, with the individual brokers, they like to focus individually on, on that, uh, that new agent. The team, like as an example of mine, they, they like to embrace. So when I have new agents come on, the entire team actually embraces that new agent and you know I mean everybody has their own capacity of what they're willing to offer um, each other but you know that tends to help pull both that agent a lot stronger um, and the uh, from what I've seen out in the field. Um, well first they can go see the YPN where they got a great uh, training program for new agents but um, thinking back to when I started, uh, the first thing that I did that I would tell people is to make sure that you set up all of your online profiles. Everywhere you can set up a profile, set up a profile. Um, make sure it's consistent, make sure it's clean, set up systems. Uh, I actually have you know, emails for, for new prospects that I can literally copy and paste, but obviously you have to build that. So I would tell them to focus on building themselves so that they can build their business. I first start off with telling them, whatever you saw on Bravo, whatever you saw on HDTV, it ain't true. Um, you know, so I get that out the way. Then I tell them that, hey, you're going to be working. You're going to be working all day. You're going to be working all night. You're going to be lead generating because you have nothing else. Um, so one thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to be calling everyone that's in your phone, letting them know that you got into the new business and you're looking for business. Um, so I, I really strive on that. I, I tell them that. You have to change your mindset from a nine to five to, hey, if I don't work and I don't get a check this week or this month, I'm not gonna be able to supply food for my family. So I, I think getting them to understand that, it's either gonna let them know that, hey, I'm up for the challenge or I need to go back to my other job. So um, I think explaining to them what they're getting themselves into is very, very important, you know? Um, and then from there, attending certain training classes, not becoming a full-time student, but learning the MLS, learning RPR, learning the other systems that are gonna benefit the business, benefit them. Um, definitely going back and creating all their profiles, I agree with that. Um, but, but the key is, the key is to know that you have to build a name for yourself, you know? And so many times people think that I'm gonna come into the office and the business is gonna come to me, you know? You may do floor duty, you may knock on some doors, but at the end of the day, you gotta understand that you're building a name for yourself, you know? People are entrusting one of their biggest investments with you. So it's definitely making sure that 
you're representing yourself with the way you dress, with the stuff that you're posting on social media pages, um, and, the, and the information that you're putting out there. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you want to let them know that first they are going to probably work more hours than they've ever worked in their entire life for the first few years. Um, you know, after that, um, they need to understand, I, I try to make them understand that they have just can't come into a direct sales business. And if they don't start to try to get into that mindset and start to pay attention to direct sales and, and, and take in a lot of the trainings that are provided, um, you know, by our MLSs and brokers and everybody that, uh, just all the training that is out there. And then after that, I would just probably want to tell you that make, no, make customer service your number one priority. Um, it's probably one of the very most important things that you can do um, in, in getting a jump on that early up front. Uh, the money will follow, the database will follow if you can do that right there. Um, and then it's, um, you know, that, that's really going to help you build those relationships as well. So, Yeah, I think um, getting having somebody a mentor that, that you can learn from is, is really, really important in my opinion because they've gone through some, some hard knocks already and they can kind of guide you in the right direction. Um, as George and Sam both said about getting a good broker to work for. Um, in, in a GRI class, I, I did GRI and it helped tremendously. I did all three classes for my post licensing when I first got in the business. Um, came up here to Miami and, and did them up here. And uh, it was expensive, but it was so worth it uh, because there's so many different trainers, you get different ideas, you learn how to, uh, how to do everything we're learning this weekend, basically, you know, branding yourself and giving the customer service um, and, and being consistent. You're starting from scratch, and if you've never started a business from scratch, you will work harder than you've ever done anything in your life. Most people don't get it, you know? Most people think, and they watch all the rich people running around, and they oh my God, they're so lucky. Yeah, go, go work with them for a day and see how lucky they are. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Um, and I think that it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a, something that people just don't realize, the amount of effort. It's like when you take off a rocket ship, the first two, three minutes is all the momentum's going. So the first two or three years of your career, you've got to get the momentum going. Once you get it going, you can keep it going by marketing and consistency, like you've heard all of us say. Um, but just realize you're going to have to work really, 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 really hard the first two or three years. And if you don't, you will fail. <laughs> well, we've, we've reached the end, except we have one last question. This is a fun question. Um, Jeffrey has probably already answered this question for us. I want you guys to be candid and not be afraid with the answer to this question, but remember you're being recorded. <laughs> so the question is, what is the one thing people would be surprised to know about you? <laughs> so I wrote a book. Uh, I wrote an action thriller heist about 11 people going after money and killing each other. And the book's called Deceive. It's a love story. There's a lot of money and treasure and countries and scuba diving and ships and airplanes and, and um, bombs and uh, guns. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The question is what is the one thing that people will be surprised? To know about you, I, I actually, I actually care. You know, there's a lot of agents out here that they're they're just here for the dollar. They really don't care. They don't care what they have to do, who they have to cut, go, um, to make a dollar. You know, at the end of the day, I actually care. You know, um, so many times, I put myself in the position of the homeowner. I put myself in the position of the prospective buyer. And if this is not the situation that I would be in, I would definitely let them know that hey, I think it's best that you back out. You know. Um, at the end of the day, there's tons of money out there to be made, but our rapport, our, our names, is most key. Thanks, Jeff. Want to go next? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't even know where to start with that. Um, no, nobody here really knows me anyway. I'll answer. Let me answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the thing that I, I think about is I remember 08 and 09. You know, I got in the business in 05, I started in 04. And uh, 08 and 09, I mean, we, we, my wife and I went backwards probably three or $400,000 in credit cards um, that we just, we were bound and determined to survive. And we were putting, you know, electric bills on credit cards and 
And now, what do we, 10 years later, 12 years later, uh, our net worth is insane. You know, it's just insane. <laughs> um, but that time frame of 08 and 09, if you hadn't lived through it, it was tough. Um, and, and some of the younger people hadn't, and, and it, it, it really humbled you. You know, when you didn't have enough business to, to, to buy a bank or electric bill. Um, so I think that that was probably my biggest thing that a lot of people never realize. And I came, you know, I moved here, sold a company, and had a lot of money when I came down, and I went backwards really, really fast. But um, but now we, we you know, now we're just crazy with it. Yeah, thank you. I think there's a couple of people. <laughs> A couple of people in this room who would not be surprised, but uh, one of the things I do and enjoy doing is uh, I write what could best be described as food porn. <laughs> I knew somebody oh, would no, start right. with that. <laughs> you want to elaborate? <laughs> I, uh, I have a real passion for, uh, for good food and good wine, and uh, when I get uh, to inspired, I'll start writing about it, uh, and, uh, hopefully enough to make people drool. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you post it? <laughs> I used to have a blog that I posted it on, uh, it was called Wines for the Weekend, uh, and I, I, haven't, I haven't posted to that one in a long time, so the rest of it is all in uh, private editions. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, I guess um, I, I would just say my, my first year in this business, I sold, I, I closed two transactions. My second year, I closed two transactions. That was, that was it. So, I mean, two full years. Um, I think it just um, it, it goes to show that anybody, you know, if you want to do it, you can do it. And um, that's um, it, and that, that's about it, really. So. Believe it or not, I'm not into food porn. So oh, okay. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I was reflecting back on uh, one of the comments that, Saying as far as like 09 and what was going on at that time, and, and uh, you know, I was I was doing really really well prior to that, and that was a big hit, and it really goes to show what you know our market and, and what our business could do. It can be a hot and cold business, just like that, and it can it can take on relationships and it can sour relationships so easily. Um, you know, ultimately, probably what I was thinking about, you know, as our lives change and we get into different levels, you know, with where you're at and, and real estate and personally, you know, I look at just family. Uh, I look at, you know, that's what I was trying to achieve as I was growing into the business, being in it for 15 years, and I was able to, you know, get into a marriage that I was happy with. And, uh, and have a child, I've got a little three-year-old. And that's really where my focus is now. As a lot of you probably don't know, that, you know, I think that was the question, is what you don't know or what, we, what you don't know about us or what we don't know what we do. Um, you know, besides trying to balance, you know, being in the business and getting things done and selling, you know, having family and maintaining that relationship is tough. And, uh, and I've got, like I said, I have a little three-year-old, and that's really what my time is. Just having a great time with her and ensuring I try to get as much time with her and the family uh, that I can with the, with the tumultuousness that you'll see in our business, which happened in the past and what we'll see in the future. Thank you, Jonathan. Again, thank you to our panel.